Everyone dies, but not everyone lives. And Prince lives on today. Let's discuss. Hey everybody, welcome back to Prince's Friend. I'm your host, Prince's Friend and fellow student of Prince. Welcome back to the show. You can obviously see that I'm trying some different things today uh, in terms of setup, and I'm using a brand new camera that I just got that I hope to be using a lot more going on in the future. But I wanted to discuss how Prince lives on even today. Now there are many who mourn Prince ever since he left the earthly plane on April 21st, 2016. It still stings to talk about, which is why I don't necessarily talk about it all that much on this channel. Instead, I love to talk about how his spirit and his messages continue to live on, and how his legacy is very much still alive. This is one of those videos. Prince still lives on in our world, even if he's not physically here. How, you may ask? Let's talk about it. Prince still lives on in his music, and there's a lot of it. Of course, most of us in his Purple Army are well aware of this. But if you're a casual fan, or maybe only are familiar with his hits, I urge everyone to go and try to listen to more. Take a deeper dive into Prince's catalog and really start listening to not only the music, but the messages. Prince is there in the music for us. And not only does he live on in his released music, but there's an entire vault of music that we've never heard that is going to be released soon, hopefully, and it's going to start reaching wider and wider audiences. Not only the music that will go on to become new albums, but also several live performances and concerts to really show off the brilliance of his live show. Also movies that he shot and never released. All of these things are coming in the future, but we can always enjoy the stuff we have today. And he was always concerned with bringing up the next generation of musicians. He innovated so much when it came to how to compose or arrange a song, his use of instruments and his blending of sounds and even pushing the limits of what a human voice was capable of doing. Sure, you can see the influence and the impact that he made on his direct protégés like Shelby J, Sheila E, Donna Grantis, many, many more. But also so many artists that never got to work with Prince directly are so inspired by his work. Whether we're talking about Miguel, who's one of my all-time favorites right now, the Red Hot Chili Peppers who adopted his funk style into their punk rock, Beyonce who carries on the R&B and the dance legacy, D'Angelo has also continued Prince's legacy, and Alicia Keys is probably the shining example. She even recently tweeted a really memorable quote that she learned from Prince. This isn't something I'm making up, people. The people who have worked with Prince or are inspired by Prince, they are sharing their stories as well. Hashtag student of Prince is just me putting a name to it, but it existed long before that. Even further, Prince's example pushed everyone in music to be able to adapt to brand new sounds and create new things, become more creative. He also touched those that worked behind the scenes, from sound engineers to assistants to fashion designers to executives. Everyone who got to interact with Prince was better because of it. One of the coolest things about going to Paisley Park is seeing the wall of inspiration. It's Prince in the middle, and on one side, it's all of the people that he felt he was influenced by. That included Earth, Wind & Fire, Joni Mitchell, James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Wonder. And on the other side was all the artists that he felt he inspired, from the revolution to the time, to Vanity Six. And there he is in the middle with his arms stretched out wide. That mural is an incredible reminder of how not only did he influence others, but he had his own influences as well. And that's also part of being a modern day sage. You learn as much as you can and you impart that wisdom to others. Speaking of Paisley Park, his very essence is there at Paisley Park in Chanhassen. I have personally done the tour once and I hope to do it again come celebration. It was definitely an experience that I feel everyone should attempt. Now I've heard from a lot of different people who say they really feel like it's just too soon. Their wounds and their mourning is just too fresh. But I'd argue that even though those emotions are raw, it may be beneficial for you to go to Paisley Park, feel his presence, feel his spirit there in the building, and it may help in the healing process. 
Prince also lives on in his effect on the music industry itself. Prince's messaging has always stood the test of time, but in the microcosm that is the music industry, he also changed what it meant to be successful as a musician. He was the first to develop ways to give his music directly to his followers on the internet. And he revolutionized the industry today. Now any indie artist has a chance of hitting it big, either by being discovered by a large label and getting signed and whatever, or they can be just as successful on YouTube, doing their own fundraising, doing a Kickstarter, doing all these different things. You can be successful as long as you're getting your music out and there are fewer and fewer barriers for you to do that. He also talked through his examples that if you do choose to sign with a big record company, that you now can be a lot more wary of predatory practices and protecting your rights as an artist and a creator. Prince did that. It's amazing. Prince also lives on through his philanthropy, whether the people knew that his presence was there or not. Prince was known to donate millions of dollars to charity and causes that he supported, such as Rebuild the Dream, a mobilization of hundreds of thousands of everyday people to build strong, vibrant communities. The Al Clare Promise Zone, a citywide grassroots coalition of community partners committed to help children be better prepared to graduate from college and be successful in their chosen careers, as well as Black Lives Matter, which has been pushing for better accountability for law enforcement in the United States. In addition to giving financially, Prince also gave his time to other recording artists in the industry. He would reach out to talented up-and-comers and guide them and record with them. And this example is so that his students can then carry on his lessons into the future. You are never too big or too important to reach out and pull someone along with you to inspire and teach people directly. And last but not least, Prince lives on in all of us, his friends. There are a lot of communities that gather behind different artists, but none of them have I ever felt so invited, so free to be myself. And obviously every community has trolls and people who are just there to cause trouble. But students of Prince and his message and his music, we are a unique bunch. We share his music, his talent, his genius with anyone that we come across. And we're always innovating in how we do that. Before it was blogs, then there were music sharing sites. Now you have YouTube. There's a ton of podcasts. Journalists are taking time out of their newsworthy pursuits to write articles about their love of Prince. And I've actually been asked several times, why didn't I have this channel before Prince died? And my answer has stayed pretty much the same. Before he died, there wasn't a need. He was here doing the work and spreading his music. But now it's our job. He's no longer here to spread his own legacy. So it's up to us. It's up to his friends. And through us, he will continue to live. So where do we go from here? Prince was a mysterious man and he left us as mysteriously as he left a room. But perhaps part of his genius is how he left an extraordinary amount of himself with us in his music and his teachings. He's gone, and yet he's also everywhere. So while some are still missing him, some are trying to look back on the past and figure out the who's and the why's and all the stuff, the only thing that truly matters now is where we go from here. How we appreciate the incredible gift that he gave us. How lucky we are to live in the same century, the same lifetime as this incredible man. How he touched our lives and how we carry his messages and his music forward and how we teach that to the future generations. I argue that Prince lives today and it's up to us to keep him alive. So this is essentially part two of this ongoing video series that I've been working on. Part one was Prince was a modern day sage. And we're going to continue kind of looking at Prince through this different lens, kind of looking at all the different purple lessons that he left us. Trying to go a little bit more in depth than just, that's darn good music. And I hope that you'll go with us on this really cool journey. So if you like this video, obviously hit like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Also take the time to share this video with anyone that you can. Anyone that you think will appreciate a deeper learning about Prince. We're grateful for your likes, for your subscribes, for your sharing, for your retweets, for your support. And together we can continue exploring Prince's legacy. 
And if you want to support the channel directly, you can go to patreon.com slash princessfriend. Thank you, and may you live to see the dawn.